Yeah, so this morning we're going to talk about images and your website. Uh, very, very, very important uh, and probably one of my biggest pet peeves. Uh, that's why I chose to, to talk on this topic. Uh, so I titled it, Hot, Your Images Are Making Your Website Sad. Uh, so how many times have you gone to a website and just waited and waited and waited for the site to load? Uh, you know, while you're waiting on the content, to, you know, to load as well. Uh, you got images just choppy, you know, waiting, you know. Uh, that's no fun. Nobody wants to sit there and wait on a website to load like that, especially in 2019. Maybe that would have worked when we still had 56K, um, but not nowadays. So uh, there's a lot of different, you know, aspects when it comes to images and your website. So, you know, a few things we're going to talk about are uh, the impact of images, you know, user experience, why we even put them on the website to begin with. You know, you hear a lot of people say, uh, don't use hero images, you know, uh, get straight to the content, this and that. Uh, I agree with a lot of that, but I also think websites should be beautiful. Um, I am an artist um, in that regard. Not a good artist, I don't think, but uh, yeah. So anyways, uh, so we're going to go over types of images. Um, that you might use on your website. So you may have heard of the typical JPEG, the uh, PNG file, the GIF file. Um, those are the standard files you're going to use primarily on your website, which you know a lot of this may be common knowledge to a lot of you guys. Um, but we're going to go over you know the different types and where to use them, how to use them. Um, and then we're going to go over file sizes. Uh, the three different file types have their varying uh, characteristics in terms of file sizes. Uh, so there's a, you know, uh, there's a difference between DPI, dimensions, um, lots of things that you need to keep in mind when you're uploading these files, these images to your website. Um, so again, yeah, where to use the different types of images. Uh, we're going to go over how to save the images. That's important. Many people get hung up on, you know, hey, I took a photo on my iPhone. How do I get it on the website? Um, or I uploaded it to my website and now it's just huge. Um, that sort of stuff. So we'll go over that. Uh, and then we'll go over how to style your, style your photos, how to take them for the website. Um, the creative side of it, the fun part, really, in my opinion. Um, not all of us are photographers, I'm not, but you know, with today's technology, most of your iPhones or your smartphones can take a photo quality enough with the natural lighting to make your website pop, to do the job. So where it all began for me, uh, 21 years ago, I started with GeoCities, Angel Fire, that may ring a bell to some of you guys. Um, some of you may be way too young to even know what that means. Um, so yeah, back in the day, it was all just pure HTML, uh, that sort of stuff. And my first website was for the Taco Bell dog and Spice Girls. Um, the whole site was, you know, just raw HTML and what I learned and, what, you know, why I even bring this up is what I learned back then, you know, 21 years ago, uh, a lot of the techniques I learned then, you know, still apply today. Um, you still don't want the websites to take forever to load. You still want them to, you know, be captivating. You still want, you know, great imagery. Um, you still save the images a lot, you know, in the same way. At least I do. Um, I'm, I'm going to show you my method. and. Uh, yeah, so I think it works. Um, so what we're going to go over also is the difference between aesthetics and functionality. Um, again, a second ago, I brought up DPI. That's kind of the only thing you hear about when people talk about images. You never really hear about kilobytes. Uh, you never really hear about pixel dimensions, unfortunately. And those are very uh, pertinent uh, details when it comes to web development and design and what we do. Um, unfortunately, though, again, DPI is like the heavy, heavy hitter in the image realm. Um, what is DPI? Uh, you probably know, dots per inch. Um, you know, you'll probably see a lot of people say 300 DPI for print, um, 72 DPI for web. Those rules more or less apply, um, but they are less important than the overall file size and the dimensions of your image. Um, so, yeah. So what's ideal for web uh, and what's ideal for different parts of your website? You know, it really depends on your intended usage. Um, you know, if you have a website, say, if you have a small website, uh, just a simple, you know, four-page about us website kind of thing, 
uh, you can sometimes get away with a little bit more uh, file size. Uh, however, if you're talking like a huge WooCommerce website with hundreds of products, you really don't want, you want to maximize, you know, your server, you don't, or minimize your server load. Um, you don't want your file sizes to be excessive. You want to keep them down to a minimum. Uh, so again, it really depends on your intended usage. Um, if you have two, two images on your homepage, you can get away with a little bit more. Um, all things that you want to pay mind to while you're developing the site. Um, and sometimes we're not always in control of the images that we get. So sometimes you have to give creative direction to whomever is providing those images. Um, or in some cases, we even have to do some manipulation. Um, Photoshopping or just, you know, compression, that sort of thing. Um, so just to put it in kind of, you know, everyday terms, maybe it's everyday terms, it might be archaic now again, but downloading MP3s, nobody really does that anymore, but um, if you ever did download an MP3 or you download something off of iTunes, you know, the file size that you're getting, uh, if you were to get an MP3, you're getting about a five megabyte file, give or take, for roughly a three, three and a half minute song. Uh, iTunes is going to be a lossless file, so it's going to be much larger. 2019, it's a, it's a different time. But anyways, MP3s, uh, so let's just backtrack. Say you have 10 slider images on your home page. Each of those images are 500 kilobytes in size. You're looking at roughly, give or take, a 5 megabyte just initial load right there on your home page. Nobody wants that. You don't want that. Your server doesn't want that. Your host doesn't want that. Uh, and it's just, it's, you know, it's, it's bad practice. Um, so to put that again into everyday terms, you know, if you have 10 slider images, that's about the size of an MP3 file of a song. And audio files are much larger than compressed images for your website. It's a different world. You really don't want to be getting into that territory um, in terms of file sizes on your website. Uh, we talked about JPEGs, PNGs, and GIFs. Um, do you guys, Raise of hands uh, if you know the difference more or less between, you know, is it PNG or a GIF? Which one is animated? Is it PNG, raise your hand, or is it GIF? Yeah. Right on. Uh, cool. So we don't really use GIFs a whole lot more in websites. They kind of look bad. Um, you see them a lot now on like social media, that sort of thing, as jokes, you know, memes, that sort of thing. Not taken seriously, but websites we do take seriously. Um, so GIFs, we use them very sparingly. And I think the only time I really ever tread into GIF territory is if my PNG file that I'm trying to use happens to just be way, way too large. Um, so JPEGs, you have the ability to compress. You have more freedom of you know, saying, I want it to, to be uh, optimized for web. You, know, you can control the actual percentage of you know, uh, the lossless quality of the image. Um, PNG files, you do not have that freedom. Uh, they just save in perfect, great quality. Um, and the beauty of PNG files is that you can use them sparingly and you can use them in design aspects where there's like nice fades or nice overlays. Uh, and if, when designed right, they work, they work great. And again, GIFs not used a whole lot anymore. So, uh, about aesthetics, you know, again, I'm all about um, functionality and you know getting to the meat of the content of course that's that's why we even have the website the website is there for a reason um, nine times out of ten it's not for unless you're a photographer it's not for the photos uh, however you know the photos are incredibly important billboards uh, everything is is you know photo uh, these days especially you'll notice a lot of websites now are just going to flat out full screens when you load them uh, it's just a photo, uh, or even, not even on topic here, but videos now. Um, that's, that's a whole other beast, and we won't even touch on that. Uh, but you're seeing a lot of videos as backgrounds, even on my own portfolio site, you know. Um, but that again, you know, is kind of the same, applies the same techniques and concept, you know, keep the file sizes to a minimum, compress for web, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, so slider images, um, for example, they need to be well thought out. Uh, you guys are familiar with the hero slider image, I'm assuming. Um, so you have you know, different, different variations. You know, like I said, you have websites that load with no text, just beautiful imagery. Uh, that kind of just, you know, the, the down arrow that just says, you know, scroll down for more information. 
Um, but it's really that image that's you know keeping the user uh, you know there for a few seconds, saying, "Wow, uh, I want to be here. I want to scroll down and see more." Um, so yeah, and then you have the option to add text on them. Um, you'll see some websites put a lot of text on their homepage right there on the first scroll. Um, you, you know, the idea is to not overwhelm your user. Uh, you want them to get to your site, know what, you're, what they're seeing, know what the site is about, what they're there for, you know, within the first few seconds and never feel overwhelmed. You know, if they're overwhelmed, they're going to click away, you're going to lose their, their lead, you're going to lose, you know, the website business. Um, yeah, and another thing is image focus. Uh, the subject of the image is very important. A lot of, um, you know, like a lot of slider images, like for example, this is horizontal. Um, a lot of slider images, they will just kind of slap a photo in there and not pay attention to where the subject is in, in the image um, and how that actually looks on the website. For example, if we're talking about a coffee website or a, a coffee shop, we have a coffee mug and we have some text to the right, we don't necessarily want the text to sit on top of the mug. So we want to, you know, take that photo for the website in mind, you know, that keeping in mind that we're going to put text on top of it, that sort of thing. Uh, you also want to think about space for your nav bar. Um, you'll see some websites with big, thick, solid color nav bars. Um, I think we've moved into kind of a time where uh, people do need to see the navigation. They want it. They want the, you know, they want to know how to get to where they're going to on the site, but they don't want that to take up 200 pixels of their home page. Uh, they're wanting, you know, what people want to see nowadays are beautiful images. They want the nav bar to be there. You need it there. Uh, but you don't need that to obstruct your overall design, unless it plays a, a role in the design, of course. But uh, So again, images that you take for your website, you want to keep in mind that you're going to have a nav bar at the top, maybe a logo up there as well. Uh, so for, for example, if you have like a photo of a tree in the background, you know, and your logo happens to be a little bit on the busy side, it's not going to work uh, with that tree back there and your logo on top. It just doesn't make for a, a pretty website. Uh, so yeah. So uh, he runs slider images. So uh, my recommendation and what you'll see a lot of uh, recommendations of are about 1,900 pixels wide is your max. And so this is your actual file dimension size, our image dimension size. So about 1,900 pixels wide is going to be your uh, suggested uh, width here. So, for example, if someone has a, you know, a big old screen, then it, the website, if you, if you develop it properly, uh, do responsive CSS, 1,900 pixels scaled up, a little bit larger is not going to really look, you're not going to notice a difference in quality. Um, however, you know, if you have a 700 pixel slider image scaled up to even just a, you know, 23 inch monitor or, you know, go even bigger, you're going to really see the quality, you know, you're going to see the pixels, you're going to see the, the compression in the image. Um, so again, 1900 pixels is my suggested width here for slider images. Um, again, 72 dpi is, is preferred, but that is less important um, than the overall dimensions of file size. Uh, we talked about the actual uh, kilobyte size. So there's kind of three different sizes we're talking about. We're talking size, you know, we're talking uh, size in terms of the file, and then we're talking um, another size, sorry. Anyways, uh, yeah, so basically 500 uh, kilobytes is going to be the max that you want to, to save this at. And that's even like for your biggest and your most detailed photo. Um, I would even suggest keeping it at 100 kilobytes or less if you can, you know. Um, some photos you can get away with that. Um, some photos that have more detail um, are going to want to, you know, just have, they're going to want to save more detail in the photo so the file size is going to naturally be a little bit larger. Um, but yeah, that is very important. and so. For example, if you take a photo on your phone and you want to use it on your website, uh, most phones are saving images at like anywhere between 2 and like 12 megabytes now. Way too large for your website. Um, so we'll go over how to get that from one place to another here in a second. Um, 
something else to keep in mind is, you know, monitors, websites, we mostly see them from a wide perspective, unless we're looking at websites on our phone. Uh, in which case, you know, that, that is where development comes in play, response to CSS comes in play, and you just scale your, you know, your viewport down appropriately. But uh, we're, gonna, we're primarily focused right now on the desktop version or the laptop version. Uh, May I ask you question? Absolutely. When you say whatever height, mm -hmm. so I'm a little confused about that. So I can get, I can... Just to main, maintain your aspect ratio of the image. You know, of course, you don't want to go crazy with like 2,500, 3,000 pixel tall image. But if it were that tall, then it would naturally be wider than 1,900 pixels. Uh, you know, 1,900 pixels. I mean, not, uh, t I take that back, you know, it, that's not true, but in most cases, 1900 pixels, you're not going to have an image much taller than 1200 pixels-ish, give or take, uh, if it's taken with a phone or if it's, you know, taken with a camera. You know, someone photoshopped an image, of course, you can photoshop anything you want. Uh, and I've seen websites utilize background images before, um, you know, 2000 pixels wide. And they, they had a, rather than using like a repeated pattern um, or, you know, um, a transparent or using like a CSS or anything, they just, they straight up just used a Photoshop image from top all the way down to the footer. And we're talking, you know, 7,500, 10,000 pixels tall and a 25 megabyte image, you know. Um, it's, it's, you know, it, 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 it's done. Um, but yeah, so in terms of height, you know, you just want to maintain the aspect ratio of your image, of course. Um, and in some cases, you know, splatter images, you can get away with, you know, cutting the top or the bottom or cropping your images accordingly, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, is that cleared up? Yeah. So that kind of covers slider images, hero images. So we also have content images, uh, you know. Of course, you scroll down past the, the hero image, and then there's more to the website. Uh, you've got the content, so that's what we're, where everyone's here for. Um, they're not really here to sit there and just stare at your, your home page. Let's backtrack, actually, too, because I didn't cover something. Uh, when, when I say people aren't here to stare at your home page, uh, brings up a great point on your hero and slider images. Um, some people will cram 10 images and no offense uh, to anyone in here if, if you have a lot of sl slider images. Um, you know, but it's, it's preferred or it's suggested to really keep that, you know, it's down to a minimum, you know, just enough to get your point across. Um, I like to see three to five on sites I develop at the very, very, very most. Um, it kills me when I, when I have to do seven, ten, something like that, because then you're starting to have to compromise image quality for load time, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so, you know, the number of slider images uh, does play a key role as well. And are you guys familiar with, like, Revolution Slider, um, any of the, the big slider plugins or anything? They typically will take care of, like, uh, the scaling of the image for you. So, in most cases, and in, in, in most cases in WordPress in general, you know, you just you upload the photo and it does the response over it, does the scaling for you. Um, but yeah, so again, three to five in your slider. Yes, ma'am. Um, going back to the height, sure. do you have a recommendation or a preference to how tall? Because I know um, some websites will have like the Right, so some sites will load at where the image is full width and you don't see any of the content below your initial load. Uh, they're, taking, they're, they're telling the slider, no matter what size your screen is, always take up the full width of, of the viewport upon first load. Always show full screen image. Uh, I love it. I personally love it. Um, so long as you indicate, you know, depending on your, your target audience and the website, you know, if your target audience is younger, most of them understand to keep scrolling down. Uh, if you have an older target audience, you sometimes need to indicate, you know, scroll down for more. You know, that this is if you're utilizing the full screen load, you know, uh, or the arrow down to indicate that there's more down below. Um, but you also see some sites, you know, that are, 
almost full screen, but there's still just like a little peak of the content down below. They're, they are not utilizing any sort of uh, coding to say, you know, hey image, take up the full screen. They just have like a set, you know, probably, you know, take up the full width of the browser window, but only make it say 900 pixels tall. And in terms of a suggestion I have there, uh, most of my slider images I will do, you know, if, I, if it's a full screen website, 1900 by anywhere between, depending on the crop of the image um, and what we're trying to focus on the image on, uh, 1080 or like 1200 at the most. Um, and again, I do a lot of compression on my images to, you know, to make sure that the file sizes are small. Um, basically, again, we'll go over that in a moment. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, yeah, the big full screen, you know, full screen load, what you, what you brought up is popping up a lot now though. Um, yeah, and, and in terms of the height for those images, it doesn't really matter what height the image is because the coding is telling the image to take up the full width. So, you know, so long as it's a good quality and it's the right height, it's gonna look good in there. Does that make sense? More or less? Okay. So, uh, content images. So again, as you scroll past the hero image uh, or the first scroll of your website, you've got content. Um, this can get a little tricky because there's so many different ways to lay images out within your content. I mean, again, there is with, with sliders as well, but we're just kind of touching, uh, going over the basics there. But uh, with content images, you're seeing a lot nowadays um, of like overlapping images, a lot of like, uh, like odd spacings, um, and I like it. Um, but yeah, it, it kind of makes things a little bit trickier in terms of um, how you approach, you know, adding the image. Do any of you guys use um, like Visual Composer or Divi or X or any of the, the theme uh, builders? Raise of hands. Yeah. Uh, so most of those kind of have like just, you know, you can kind of set the columns you know, of course, and it does the work for you. Uh, what you want to pay attention to there, and I may be speaking uh, the stuff you already know, but you know, obviously the file size and the quality of the image. Um, again, so you basically have left, right, or center, but again, some websites have uh, full, the content and the imagery goes all the way out. So in that case, you want to, you know, do you want your image to be, um, 50%, do you want it to be 25%, do you want it to be, you know, two-thirds? Um, all things to pay attention to while you're developing and designing your website. Um, also want to keep in mind the surrounding text around the image. Um, it seems to be kind of like uh, the last thing you thought about is the text. Um, it's like, oh, we have this, this image, we have dummy content in place, dummy text in place, and then you try to actually fill it with real content and then you find yourself short. Uh, so you have an image over here on the left taking up 50% of your, your viewport, uh, but then you only have two sentences on the right, so you have just this really clunky looking content area. Um, in my opinion, and I think in most people's opinion, that doesn't look good. Um, so you want to think that out while you're designing and picking out images for your site. You know, either don't have the image there at all, write more content, that's a slippery slope, um, but there are ways to design around that for sure. Um, and you'll see even, you know, we're talking, right now, you know, we've only discussed, you know, kind of images that taken with kind of a camera, but there's all sorts of different types of images, you know, there's illustrations, there are, uh, you know, just solid color bars, you know, which you wouldn't actually use an image file for, uh, I hope uh, you would use, you know, CSS or something along those lines, um, but yeah. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways that you can actually lay out your content and utilize the images. Um, another thing you also see a lot of nowadays is, you know, an image as the background with text on top of it. Um, again, it's smart to think about, you know, what image you're going to put in that background. Smooth, uh, smooth details in the background, you know, again, trees never really work as background images. Uh, rarely. I, I don't know a whole lot about trees, but most of the ones that I'm given are just a whole bunch of leaves and branches all over the place. Um, but yeah, so uh, it sounds like a tree, right? Um, but yeah, um, smooth images work great in the background. 
And again, um, when you're slapping text on top of images, you see it a lot now. Um, people are also putting like, a semi-transparent color on top of the image. Um, a number of different ways you can go about that. You can actually Photoshop that into your image. Or my preferred method is if you're using Divi or X or a theme builder, um, utilize the, the uh, element, you know, the row or your column. Actually put your image in that background column and then you have, you know, another layer on top of it where you'll actually set a transparent color on top of that. So that way when you pass the website off to the client, they can go in and put any image they want of trees uh, or whatever. Uh, in that background image and not have to go into Photoshop and color it or put the overlay on. Does that make sense? Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do with CSS that kind of give the visual um, aesthetic of an image, um, but they aren't actually image files. So that kind of brings up something else and we'll go over that here in a moment, I think. Um, it's later on. Uh, so how to save images. Um, I th most of us are using Photoshop to manipulate our photos. Um, Illustrator is going to be more of your creative print stuff, not a lot of web. Um, not in my world at least, um, 15 years, 20 years of this. Um, and then InDesign is going to be more of like official print. Uh, people are doing, you know, some website stuff in there as well, but primarily um, you're going to do most of your quick, dirty work in Photoshop. Um, so Photoshop has a beautiful feature called Save for Web. So any image that you have in Photoshop, you can save for web. Uh, and I, I believe it's now actually a legacy feature. Uh, they have other methods, other ways to do this. But so long as it's a, still a feature in Photoshop, I'm going to jump to it because it is the quickest and the most streamlined way to just get the job done. Uh, so yeah, save us for web, and um, so when you're actually doing this, you'll see in the top right, you have a drop down where it says JPEG. Um, in that section, you can select if you're saving a JPEG, a GIF file, or a PNG file, whatever you want. Um, and then you actually have, down just to the bottom right, past, uh, you have the quality drop down. So you can, get as, you can get away with qualities as low as 20% sometimes and not even really see a difference. You know, if you're using uh, let's jump back to putting images in the background of your site with a transparent color on top of it and then text on top of that. Uh, those background images in there, you can get away with like really, really notching the quality down on those because people aren't going to really be paying attention to those. They're really focused on the text on top of it. It's got a color on top of it too. Uh, so you can get away with making that a super small image size, which your website will love. And so will the user who's viewing your website. Uh, they just won't know it. So, um, yeah. So, again, um, you've got the save appropriate file type for usage. So, we talked about the three different types. JPEGs are going to be primarily used for your hero and slider images, anything that doesn't have a transparency. Um, and again, JPEGs, you can really, you have a lot of control over the file size. And, uh, we talked about the, the different file sizes, and then down here, it'll always give you a preview. So it says 174K down there. Uh, that's a really great, I mean, that, that tells you how big your file size is going to save at. Um, so again, I said 500K at the, at the most, and I'm saying at the most. Like, you kind of just never even want to go there. That's if the client's saying, I have to have this picture on the website. Um, so 500K top, uh, and then you also have down over here. So there are a number of different ways you can resize your photos. You can just open them up real quick, then hit File, Save as for web. And then you can actually control your, you can change the dimension size. So if you have like a photo from your phone and it's 5,000 pixels wide, way too wide for your website. Uh, open that image up in Photoshop, uh, then hit just don't do anything to it, then just save as for web. Uh, and then down here, you can just change your file size. So, you know, width set to, say it's a slider image, 1900 wide. Um, and that's where you'll make those changes quick on the fly. So you don't have to actually know how to work Photoshop. Um, you just have to know how to open an image and save it. Um, 
And Photoshop used to be at one point, you know, super expensive, but I feel like it's a kind of a necessary tool for what we do. Um, and I think they it's like nine bucks a month now, twenty dollars a month now for um, a package with like Lightroom. Um, there's almost no reason to not use Photoshop now. I mean, there are other options; they're free options, um, but they don't give you the robust functionality. So if you do want to expand and you do want to do more um, than just simply opening and saving, you have that with Photoshop. Um, you have it with others, but Photoshop is there's a reason it's. It's where it's at and has been for my entire life. Is there, uh, is there any benefit to going up to the next uh, level? I mean, you got photography in a single app. Photography is 10 bucks a month, so that's 21 bucks a month. So the photography is going to come with, I think, Lightroom. Um, it depends on how in-depth you're going to get with your photos. You know, um, If you're just snapping them with your phone and you want to just upload them, I wouldn't, you don't need Lightroom. Uh, anything you can do in Lightroom, you can do in Photoshop in that regard. Uh, but if you want to get really fancy with your photos and you're a professional photographer, you probably already have Lightroom. Um, but no, I mean, you don't need Lightroom at all. So there's a, there's a basic package. Just Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So there is free ones out there, too. Any recommendations? Oh, gosh, I think it's uh, GIMP is something. Uh, it's been like a Photoshop contender for a long time. Uh, GIMP? Um, I'll be honest, I stopped messing with those so long ago. Um, I wouldn't know what, what, what there, what, uh, what's out there in terms of the photo stuff. Um, Photoshop has just been my go-to tool for, you know, forever now, so. Um, you know, there, there are even, you know, mobile apps now. I think you can download like a mobile photo, you can download a mobile Photoshop. I think it's free, it may be $10. Or 20. Um, is that what it is? Yeah. So, I mean, you have apps on your phone, too, if you just never even want to touch a computer. And, you know, you can log into your dashboards, WordPress on your phones, and we can do a lot of what we do from our phones. That's not the preferred way, but it can be done if we're super busy and that's the kind of lifestyle we live. Um, but, yeah. Um, Many options. There are even like websites now. You know, if, I think you can just Google. You know, online Photoshop or online free Photoshop, and there's like literal just websites now that you know have an online uh, application that you can use without even downloading anything. But again, Photoshop is is the way to go. Uh, so styling and taking your photos. Uh, so again, it's very important, in my opinion, to leave room uh, for your, your images to be able to breathe. <laughs> Mouse. Uh, uh, yeah. So a lot of a lot of websites, you know, you'll see images cropped really close up, um, and sometimes you'll just be browsing and navigating a website, and it just doesn't feel good. It just feels clunky. You just don't feel good visiting it. You don't know really where to find your content. A lot of that has to do with just the focus and the, the way the images were approached. Um, you want to, again, let them breathe. Um, so for example, if you're using a slider image for the full width and you have a focus, you know, of course you can get creative if you have like a macro lens or you're doing something like that. You know, there's, there's the creative side of you know, zooming in on your, your focus elements. But by and large, you want to, to have your focus elements and still have room to breathe on the outsides and the sides of your image. Uh, and that goes for everything. You know, if you have like staff photos, for example, um, you know, it really, it, it's no fun to just go to the About Us page or the staff page and just see the people's faces like this. You know, let the, let the image breathe. Uh, if you get the image from the photographer and you can, you're able to crop it, um, you know, obviously you don't want their heads to look like peanuts in the photos either, but you want, you know, you want a nice crop. Um, breathable images make and carry a website. Um, you don't want to over or overuse Photoshop. I mean, I, I say uh, use Photoshop and it's the best, but I really use it minimally. I use it really just as a tool to uh, more or less take, uh, you know, when I'm not designing a site, I will take the design file from the uh, designer and usually provided in Illustrator or InDesign or Photoshop. Um, and I'll take, you know, and usually they'll give me a, 
it's, it's a much higher resolution file than I need. Um, so I'll take the elements and the images that I need, just copy, new file, save, copy, new file, save. Uh, so there's not a whole lot of actual photo manipulation, if ever really, um, when it comes to just simply developing and designing the sites. Um, so in terms of, uh, yeah, so I was saying don't Photoshop or don't overuse the effects. So for example, if you have like drop shadows in your image and you want a nice drop shadow to be, you know, on the content of your, you know, the content section of your About Us page, you don't have to Photoshop that drop shadow. Uh, you can, but say for example you have like a pattern background in your drop shadow, uh, your options are to save that image with the drop shadow as either a PNG file or a GIF because you don't want the drop shadow to overlay your pattern background and look weird. Does that make sense? So if you save that image as a JPEG, it's going to want to fill the, the gradient of the drop shadow in with white or a solid color because JPEGs don't show transparencies. So if you have a website with a pattern background, a drop shadow image on top of it, my suggested method would be to, to use Photoshop as, less as, as least as possible. So that drop shadow comes into play with CSS. You don't Photoshop that, you don't save a PNG, you don't save a GIF. You save a super low, uh, low file size JPEG file and then you, photo, or you with CSS add that drop shadow in. So in the design, you know, a lot of times we'll get um, from designers files, you know, a lot of things. Um, back to, you know, the color transparency. Uh, it's suggested to not Photoshop that transparency on there because then six months down the road when you want to change the photo, you have to know exactly the color of that transparency. You have to know exactly the opacity of it uh, to recreate that image. Um, so if you, you know, use a lot, if you utilize CSS for some of your effects uh, or some of the, you know, um, aesthetic styling, then you'll, you know, you'll still give the visual aesthetic of an image of the design that the designer provided to you. Um, but it will, again, increase load times or decrease load times, um, that sort of thing. Um, rollovers, for example. Uh, rollovers, rollovers, for example, are a great usage or a great uh, chance to use CSS over two images. Um, even as, as, you know, recent as like Five, six years ago, you'll see people doing rollovers. Um, says, you know, the about us is white text. You roll over it, uh, it has, you know, it turns green. Um, just a simple, really basic example. They were using two photos for that, for that particular uh, effect there. You know, obviously you want to utilize CSS in every case scenario uh, that you can for those particular effects and that type of stuff as well. Um, a lot of things, a lot of websites you'll see now like, uh, the three blocks on the home page. You know, it's got the slider image, the three blocks, you know, the call to actions. You hover over one of those blocks and the image will kind of, uh, it'll go turn black and white. Or, you know, it is black and white and then when you hover over it, it, bring, it comes to life. The color comes back. You don't want to use two images there. You don't want to save a black and white image and a color image. You want to just tell with CSS, hey, on mouse enter here, on hover, just desaturate the photo, turn it black and white, that sort of thing. Does that make sense? So don't overuse Photoshop, don't use too many images. When you can get away with it, CSS over images, um, that sort of stuff for effects, et cetera. Um, open space for text, we already went over that. Um, overlays, yeah, and we went over the overlays with semi-transparent colors. Um, so I'll be honest, uh, that kind of brings us towards the end here. Um, I talk fast, I apologize. Um, but we'll go over here in a few minutes with some questions. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to bring up a website here and just have you guys let me know on this site here, you know, point out is uh, where the PNG file is. Does anything stand out here as being a particular PNG file? What's the PNG, what's the JPEG? I'm sorry? The slider images are JPEGs, but the logo, however, is a PNG file. You'll see that it has kind of, you know, a semi-transparent, uh, it's got kind of an arch in the middle and that sort of thing. 
So we use, instead of you know, saving a GIF here, uh, a GIF would have been a little bit lesser quality of an image. Uh, this logo is a PNG file. And so that brings, up, brings me to another topic here. How big should you make your logo for your website? Uh, do you want it to be 1,000 pixels wide? Do you want it to be 2,000 pixels wide? You know, um, to answer that, most of your themes will resize them. But again, you start at the source. You, know, you want your source to be uh, the appropriate size before it gets to your website. Um, so most websites now, um, or again, most themes now are doing the, you know, the retina conversion as well for you. Um, but anywhere between uh, five to 800 pixels wide is gonna be a safe bet for your, to get a good sharp quality of your logo. Um, your logo may have a transparency, so if it does, you wanna save a PNG file. Uh, so again, if, if it's a PNG file, you might need to lessen the dimension size uh, because you might be getting, you know, your actual kilobytes and your actual other size might be, you know, getting closer to 500, that sort of thing. Um, but so if you, you know, some themes and some websites, um, if your logo is too wide, it will, you know, it will, with CSS, re responsively resize that logo for you but you may notice it looks a little bit fuzzy. And that's just due to the rendering of most of the time, um, usually that came from the image being too small and being scaled up. But a lot of times now, it's also coming from the image being too large, way too large, and being scaled, to, scaled down. And it's just the, the theme developers and the browser, it just, it's not doing a perfect job of resizing that image, so it's not perfectly sharp. Um, so again, if you just start at the source and do things, uh, you know, the quote unquote, I guess, right way, um, there is no right way, but the way that, uh, that WordPress currently likes it to be done, um, you're gonna have better luck. And so, let's see. I'll go back to my slide. That's about it. Um, you may have, you know, one more thing I want to bring up are CDNs. Um, you may have, you know, utilized uh, Cloud Cloudflare or anything of that nature. Um, your host uh, is also, you know, you want. It's an important factor in terms of your image load times and you know how much your site can can take uh, that sort of thing. Uh, by and large, most hosts, uh, general packages that you can get are going to cover you. I mean, they're. And when I say that, I mean going with some of the bigger guys like GoDaddy, HostGator, InMotion. Um, they, it, in today's time, most of their just standard hosting packages are going to do the job. Are going to get you by. Um, again, it's always smart to pay attention to what the intended use of the website is. You know, um, loading a lot of images on a WooCommerce site, for example, and if that WooCommerce site is running a sale, a thousand people are hitting the site trying to load those images. You need to make sure that your host is able to support that. Um, and that's not necessarily always being able to support a number of visitors. It's also being able to support processes, um, a number of other things. So you, you know, it's sometimes best to kind of consult with your host uh, and let them know, you know here's what we're going to do. We, we intend to have a lot of images on our website, or not many at all. And they, will hopefully direct you in the right path. Now, a lot of times they will try to direct you or upsell you to uh, their preferred you know, package of the month, you know, whatever they're, they're selling. Um, that's a whole other talk and a whole other whole discussion. Um, but in my opinion, you can always get by with just your cPanel Linux hosting. It's worked for 15, 20 years. Um, and it's, you know, for most clients, uh, when you're passing off a website to a client, they want to pay for their own hosting. Uh, and just works most, uh, best for most of them. Um, this is just another example I have up as a tab. Um, just, you know, another usage of how you can use your, your images here. Uh, this was a nice example I found um, where they, it looked like they weren't able to, they didn't want to hard cut it with a, you know, a hard line, uh, but they also weren't able to make it full width. So it looks like they have, just a nice little gentle fade. Uh, gentle and subtle gradients are coming back. Uh, when I say subtle, you're seeing a lot more not so subtle gradients as of like the last year or two as well. Um, 
So don't be afraid to, to you know, play around with that sort of stuff as well. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I don't know how this site did it. Um, how I would approach this. So I would, if, if this were a uh, a site through Divi or X, I would have my element or my row built out, column one, column two, and then I would have column one set uh, background layer one as the pattern, background layer two. Okay, scratch that. Background layer one is the pattern. Over here on the right column, background layer one as the image, background layer two as the PNG, as a faded PNG file to, to achieve this right here because it looks, this is not a solid color. If this was a solid color, then we wouldn't have to use a PNG file for this fade. We could use CSS for the gradient fade. But given that it's a slight pattern and there's a, a gradient or um, some you know, more detail here, I would take this pattern here, just fade it out a little bit, make a little PNG strip, and then just set that second layer background to uh, float left, or not float left, but you know, just be on the left side of that column. Does that make sense? Oh, so that would be done in Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop has you know, an eraser tool. Um, they have like a hard eraser, they have a soft eraser, you can control you know, how big the gradient is, that sort of thing. Um, so that's something you can just YouTube, you know, how to, how to use the eraser tool in Photoshop. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so I think that's about everything I can rant about images with websites. Um, you know, big no-nos are, you know, you know, using just giant images for your background. Um, I'm not going to pull any examples up because I don't want to, to bash any creative work, but, um, you know, if you take a photo with your iPhone and just use it as a background image, it's probably not going to look good, you know. Um, so, yeah, again, think out your photos. Um, approach everything from the start, you know, don't, don't dev develop and design the site and then think about the photos later. Um, I, always, I always like to think about them, like I said, from the start. So, uh, any questions? Yes, sir. When you save um, your photos, is it better to save it with a large description in the name, like uh, pink dash dress dash bow dash? So now you're getting into SEO. Well, I mean, if you're so, about images, like, yeah. <laughs> good point, though. Good point. So, yeah. Address, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, if you take it on your phone, it's going to be like IMG and a bunch of numbers. Yeah, rename it to some keywords. Uh, you know, that, that stuff is important. Then, when you upload it into WordPress, you know, you have your media library, and then you have the options in name. You know, you have the caption, you have the description. Fill that stuff out as appropriate. Um, that's all great stuff to fill out, and it does does play a big role, um, especially when you're talking like a website, a, a, Wee, a WooCommerce site with hundreds of product photos. If all those photos are tagged appropriately, uh, Google loves that. Um, example: PacoCollars.com is a site I did almost 10 years ago. Um, they started off very small. They started they started building building custom leather dog collars in Ber uh, Berkeley, California. Uh, got a WooCommerce site up, started, you know, we des designed and developed their site from the get-go, you know, I think it was done nicely. Uh, but what really made an impact was they took the site and they did everything right. They, you know, they uploaded photos the right size, they tagged their photos with the right keywords, uh, and as a result, when you search custom leather dog collars, they were sat at the number one spot on Google for almost a decade. Uh, they're at like two or three now, I think, because there's Etsy listings that are popping up and some sponsor listings now that pop up. Um, but yeah, keywords, uh, naming your files is important. Um, thank you for asking that. Yes, ma'am. Um, is that also a way that you address accessibility? Say that again now? Is that also how you address accessibility? Absolutely. Uh, just putting some keywords in there, uh, utilizing the fields that you have in your media library. Yes, sir. Um, if you are doing drawings or you know, graphics, what software would you recommend for it if you're not doing photos, but just 
Are you drawing these on paper and then putting them in the computer, or are you trying to draw them in the computer? I'm trying to, from paper, I'm wanting to actually draw them on the computer. Yeah. Do you have like a, a tablet that you draw on that goes to the computer, like a whack? I mean, I do have a touch screen laptop. Okay, so you have a way you have a way to get it on the computer. Photoshop would be would be my suggestion there. I mean, unless you're trying to do, you know, clean line work and really, you know, Illustrator is a great uh, great you know, option for that as well. Okay, so Illustrator would be a yeah, because I do want very clean lines. Yeah, yeah. If you're doing, you know, very you know, vector images, uh, you know, which we didn't really touch on because we don't use a lot of vector imagery. Uh, we use SVGs occasionally, but that's a totally different file type, and we're not going to talk about those either. Um, they just load differently than your, your standard images. Um, but yeah, so if you're talking illustrations or whatnot, uh, Illustrator, absolutely. Yes, ma'am? Uh, dynamitewebsite.co. Dynamitewebsite.co. And uh, yeah, I'm a freelance here in Asheville. I didn't really talk a lot about myself, but been doing this since high school. I uh, was on the web team in high school, and as soon as I got out of, you know, out of high school, moved out west. Took a couple years in college uh, web development, but college dropout, as soon as I realized I could make some money doing it, uh, I went head first into making money. And now I have solely used WordPress and Photoshop as a tool uh, to make a career over the last 10 years. Um, so for that, I'm forever grateful, you know, for WordPress and what it's done for us. Anyone else? Sweet. Well, thank you guys for, uh, for listening to me rant about images. <laughs> Have a good rest of your weekend. <laughs>